That's what I was asking if there was any update, that's all. Very good. They, they, they asked him to go back and make revisions. The applicant, I see him nodding in the audience, acknowledges that they're making revisions and they'll be returning to that board. And just so the board knows, I have talked to <clears throat> the residents, uh, uh, actually the, some of the businesses in the area, and there's actually a school that uh, myself and uh, Larry Deachin were able to talk to, and um, the concerns that they had were all addressed, and uh, that's why I will be voting for this. Very good. Any other discussion? Okay, please take the roll. Trustee Strike? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. And Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item 14 is a request to approve a Planning and Development Commission referral for a 59.6 var parking variation with additional miscellaneous variations at 6701 West 95th Street. This was a 7-0 vote to approve Petition 2013-35. Greg Kolinsky, Petitioner in District 1, and Item 15 is an ordinance granting that request. Um, may I have a motion, please, on Items 14 and 15? Motion to approve. Properly moved by Second. Trustee Desmond, seconded by Trustee Olenichik. Any discussion regarding this item, or these items? Please take the roll. Trustee Strike? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. And Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes. Item 16 is a request to approve the Planning and Development Commission referral for variation from Ordinance Number 11-1842 regarding flat work and impervious surfaces at 4818 West 98th Place. This is an 8-0 vote to approve Petition 2014-1, Marianne Kazmarek, Petitioner in District 3. And Item 17 is in Ordinance granting that request. We have a motion, please, on these two items. Yes. Uh Trustee just, Strait, are you making you. the motion? I will make the motion. I just, I just want to point out in respect to the comments made by uh, uh, re resident uh, John, uh, and I apologize with the name, but we'll like this. Or, uh, but uh, this particular parcel is a home. It's a single family home with a garage. And all the petitioner is asking to do is to remove the garage and build a new one. So um, I think the, the the point I would like to make is that, and I do appreciate your uh, diligence on um, in, in in ensuring that the that we you know keep our uh, honor our codes. But the impervious surface ordinance was put in place so that uh, we would have a standard that we could uh, uh, strive for. Uh, but variations are something that. You know, there, there's a reason for variations. This is a good reason to have one. The people have a house and they need a garage. And so I'm going to move that we approve this. Okay. Properly moved uh, by Trustee Strait. I'll second. Seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Any other discussion? Uh, they actually, uh, as I, it, yes, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, man. As I read this, there's actually an increase <coughs> in surface area with the removal of the pool. There was a pool on that property, and they took it out. They're expanding the garage by two feet. There's actually an additional surface mm -hmm. area as a result. Uh, Madam President, yes. I, I think, um, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure if you're reading in the uh, P&D minutes, but uh, the problem was when we, when we took the petition at P&D, the, uh, <coughs> the calculation of uh, the percentage of the variance from our 50% flat work standard, uh -huh. um, it, the, the original calculation did not include the pool. Um, so we, we modified that at the board level with planning and development. So instead of a 67% variation, it moved to 71. So we actually, initially the pool, so my understanding, the pool's remaining, uh -huh. which is that wasn't included in the oh, input. So okay. it's remaining, um, and as Trustee Strait indicated, it's, it's for the construction of a new garage. Um, that was the only increase in the impervious. M Madam Mayor? Uh, yes, Trustee Olenichik. Yeah, it's Trustee Strait correctly stated that this ordinance, which is less than three years old, I believe, since we put it in, was specifically brought in so we wouldn't have the issues of people um, prior to this, they would be able to do whatever they wanted to do from the, the sidewalk into their backyards. So putting this in, this gives us the ability to look at uh, any type of flat work that's going to be done there so that way we can ensure that uh, if there is a, a, a reason, <coughs> it's a legitimate reason, that we do have um, people that are getting permitted 
for this so we can regulate uh, the amount of impervious service that is going out there. So I just wanted to make sure that this is doing what the, the resident uh, that's out there is concerned with. It's just that we're, there's a lot more people asking for variances because you can't just throw uh, cement up in your backyard anymore. Okay. Any other discussion on items 16 and 17? Uh, please. Uh, are, are you the petitioner? Okay, would you care to come to the podium then and identify yourself, please? So state your name for the record. Mary Ann Kazmarek. Um, yes, we are replacing an existing garage that has been on the property for 59 years. And we were told by our homeowner's insurance company they were going to cancel our homeowner's insurance policy because they deemed the garage unsafe and unfit. So there is a safety issue that's also here. But I do want to say, with the meeting, with the planning committee, and our discussion, so that he knows, this wasn't just something that they voted yes on. We had a diligent discussion about it. They gave me some ideas that I never would have even thought of, and that is we are going to put up rain barrels so that the water will run from the garage, from the gutters, into a rain barrel, and the water will be collected in the rain barrel. So I don't want you know, his suggestion saying that they, they're just okaying everything. This wasn't something that I brought forward and they just okayed. There was diligent discussion between everybody. And I mean, it, to me, I'm going it's only two feet from what's already existing there. But in the process of that discussion, we also found a solution for the extra water that possibly would be there. Excellent, okay. excellent, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Please take the roll. Trustee Strike? Yes. Trustee Linichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Border? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Enjoy your new garage. Thank you. Item 18 is Ordinance 140105. This is an ordinance authorizing the sale of surplus personal property owned by the village. May I have a motion on item 18, please? Motion to approve. Properly moved Second. by Trustee Vorder and seconded by Trustee Carberry. <laughs> Any discussion on this item? Please take the roll. Trustee Strike? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes. Item 19 is Resolution 140101. Resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Oak Lawn and IDOT pertaining to a traffic signal modernization project at Illinois 50, Cicero Avenue, and Southwest Highway. Um, may I have a motion, please, on item 19? Motion approved. Properly moved by Trustee Olenichik. Second. Seconded by Trustee Vorder. Any discussion? I, I, Trustee I Olenichik. I would like to thank our Representative Kelly Burke for all the work that she did with this. Um, as long as uh, Mr. Cunningham from the uh, state and our commissioner uh, Daly, Mr. Daly, that helped out with this. Um, and just so people understand some of the things that are going to be done, this is for the general modernization of existing traffic signal, which will consist of signal heads per lane at all directions, emergency vehicle preemption, and illuminated LED street name signs, and the most important thing, uh, based off of a tragedy that happened two years ago, we are going to have pedestrian signal heads and push buttons with a timed walk across. So um, I do appreciate all the, the help from all of our representatives and the support of this board to make this a, a better uh, intersection, and I will be voting for it. Thank you. And it, it was a long, uh, long process, and trust you, Olenichik, it was always uh, top on your list of things to keep working at, so thank you. Um, any other discussion on this item? Please take the roll. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes. So we're now on item 20, which is resolution 140102. This is a resolution approving Environmental Cleansing Corporation's bid to demolish the property at 4830 West 111th Street, also known as Flapjacks. May motion have a motion approved. properly moved by Trustee Carberry. Second. Seconded by Trustee Olenichuk. Any discussion on this item? Please take the roll. Trustee Strike? Yes. Trustee Olenichuk? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Board? Yes. Motion passes. 21 on the agenda is resolution 140103. This is a resolution approving EcoClean Maintenance Incorporation uh, Incorporated's uh, custodial services bid. We have a motion on item 21, please. Motion approved. Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. 
Second. Seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Any discussion on this item? Please take the roll. Trustee Strike? No. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorderer? Yes. Motion passes 4-1. Thank you. We're moving on to item 22, which is resolution 130104. This is a resolution authorizing the execution of the First Amendment to the option and site lease agreement between the Village of Oak Lawn and a new singular wireless uh, LLC. Uh, we have a motion on 22, please. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Vorderer. Second. Seconded by Trustee Carberry. Any discussion on this item? I, I do have a question on this. I, I don't notice a, a hold harmless agreement in there. Is that part of a, a <clears throat> this lease? It's part of the original lease, uh, Trustee Olenichek. This is the First Amendment, which identifies <clears throat> the portions uh, that that our tenant, the uh, new singular wireless, which I believe is AT&T. Um, <clears throat> we went through this with uh, village staff, Tom Swall, uh, our IT department. Um, these come or these will be coming rather frequently um, we're seeing these all over um, obviously technology is growing in the wireless field um, and uh, you know unfortunately municipalities are um, slower to catch up with it all the upgrades and things like that so what we wanted to maintain in this amendment is obviously uh, a new lease um, payment amount um, obviously raise the rent uh, as the market is bearing now and also uh, the ability to uh, make sure that they come back for proper permit request when, um, and, and if and when they uh, they need to upgrade their facility. So that that was our goal in this first amendment. And that's what we've kept. Okay, I just wanted to make sure the hold harmless still would be <coughs> intact. It's still part of the original lease. And, and it looks like uh, the increase in revenues is fairly substantial. Uh, if if I, I could comment on that <coughs> briefly, uh, sure, Trustee. Larry. Um, you'll see that this agreement was executed by the village in 1996 and I recommended to the board um, when I came here that we needed to upgrade our ordinance and have a master communications ordinance to try to collate co-locate tenant um, antennas so we've been meeting with businesses and trying to up the revenue and any new telecommunication towers that come in we tried to either get them to build a stealth tower um, or co-locate on an existing structure and we also are more market driven on what we charge so it does reflect an increase thank you nice work thank you any other discussion on this item please take the roll trustee straight yes trustee Lenichik? yes trustee desmond yes trustee carberry <clears throat> yes trustee Vorder. yes motion passes Okay, so we're going to move on to item 23 now, which is our village clerk's report. Uh, Jane, you have the floor. All right. Approval of semi monthly disbursements, number 2013 23D, in the amount of $1,402,838.12. May have a motion, please, on item 23A. Motion to approve. Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. Second. Seconded by Trustee Desmond. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Trustee Strait? No. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes 4-1. Item 23B. All right. Approval of semi-monthly disbursements, number 2014-01D, in the amount of $4,674,000. $41.59. May have a motion, please, on item 23B. Motion approved. Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. Second. Seconded by Trustee Desmond. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Trustee Strait? No. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? <coughs> yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes 4 1. A couple more things, Mayor. Okay. On the move, voter registration. I'll be at the Oakview Center at 4625 West 110th Street on Tuesday, January 21st from 6 to 7 p.m. to register people to vote. And please bring two forms of ID. And I've got something else here that is new with the county. Beginning January 1st, 2014, most Illinois 17-year-olds will be eligible to register and vote in a primary election, a first in our state's history. There's a few requirements here. You have to be a U.S. citizen, 
be born on or before November 4th, 1996. Live at the address listed on your registration at least 30 days prior to the election and not claim the right to vote anywhere else. And if anybody has any questions on that, I can answer them. And I know it's difficult sometimes when you do call our um, 636-4400 number. It's a long message. If anybody wants to get directly to the clerk's office, please call 708-499-7738. I get a lot of calls and people are kind of held up a little bit. So uh, we are working on that and uh, doing the best we can. Thank you. Thanks. And your direct line is also on the website as well. Exactly. Under, under the village clerk. Okay. 24 is the village president's report. We're going to discuss 24A first. Uh, this is a request to approve a Class I liquor license. This is restaurant liquor, bar permitted, live entertainment permitted. For Avenue Flower Shop at 10632 South Cicero Avenue in District 6, and item uh, 24B is an ordinance granting that request. We have a motion, please, on item 24A and B. Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. Second. Seconded by Trustee Vorderer. Any discussion on this item? Yes. Um, Trustee Desmond. Why does a flower shop need a, a license to uh, have live entertainment in a restaurant? <laughs> Trustee Carberry, it's in your district. Would you like to address that as the it's petitioner? An existing, Tim, this was a, um, an existing uh, business that was... President, I'd be more sold. happy to help you a little bit historically. Um, this was a flower shop, and... It approached the village several years ago, went before the board. <coughs> um, quite novel and innovative. Um, and with the changing industry, and the gentleman spoke earlier about retail, retail is really, really changing. It's a, it's a different business out there. So they said, can we try out the new concept and, and have a wine and flower shop? Uh, it was a businesswoman from Evergreen Park who was the owner. Um, turned out to be very, very successful. Uh, she's an executive with a corporation that has recently relocated her to uh, South America. And um, she found another responsible buyer um, that expressed an interest. And with the real estate owner, a longtime Oaklawn uh, real estate owner, Mr. Gofus, uh, that's how the concept materialized. But they've been there fairly well. Uh, well period of time. Well received by the residents. Well received by the residents. So they have a liquor license. Mm -hmm. And Tim, I, I take my wife there, I buy her a rose and a glass of wine. Keep it. Yeah. Pretty nice. <laughs> I know what I, I'm, I'm aware of the business and it's a, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, yeah. like I said, novelty business. But I'm just curious, do, are um, they renewing the liquor license? Actually, I, 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 I had a discussion with Trustee Quinlan as well about this and she said exactly what Trustee Carberry said. She's had a lot of uh, positive reports from neighbors and that, that it's, it's kind of, it's a cheers in a different style, local establishment, and neighbors do go there. So it's, it, what, what's happened, it appears that more and more people are interested in not traveling as far uh, and like to go to establishments like this in Oak Lawn. Yeah, I'm great. Larry Pat has a uh, Pat has a common mm -hmm. uh, attorney. So it's the same liquor license. It's just being okay. Just okay. To a and, uh, okay. Okay. That clears it up. Mr. Conley, would you care to expand on sure. it? Sure. And and that was exactly it, Trustee Desmond. It's a uh, per our code when um, when ownership changes by more than fifty percent, and we have a few um, a few levels of that. For example, I think in this instance there was a purchase of the LLC that was running the operation. When that happens, the ownership changes. They're required to apply for a new license. Okay, and again, I, I'm I know the business, and it's it's one of those businesses that we, we would like to see more of. You know, innovative, willing to you know try something new. Um, hopefully, we can get at more of that type of positive thinking well, into our retail. On that note, just briefly, I don't want to take much of your time, but in your presentation, trustee, you showed a one of the. Um, the proposed new teardown in a new medical building. I can tell you I spoke to the doctor this afternoon. She was kind enough to call me before your presentation to give authorization of that rendering because their architect from O Park is a um, very, very excellent architect and he'll be going before the planning and zoning board uh, in February. 
and it has a parking deck in the rear that they're going to construct. But she wanted me to share with you that she's working very diligently to get a, some retail as part of the medical offices that's related to what um, her practice is. Illinois Women's Institute is involved with um, um, medicine that also has um, pediatric care component. And so they're looking for uh, children's clothing or related type business. And she's been talking to some very, very um, um, attractive national um, retail tenants that are interested in coming on 95th Street and I think that would be a wonderful addition, and uh, I wish her success. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item, these items? Uh, please take the roll. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Olenichuk? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorders? Yes. Motion passes. 24C, uh, Commissioner Eggert, thank you for your patience with us. We're finally getting there. Um, I want to apologize for the ambiguous way this was placed on the agenda. Um, this is Planning and Development Commission appointments, reappointments. Um, uh, I'd like a motion, please, to approve an appointment for uh, Ms. Mrs. Pina Peruda, District 6. I have a motion, please, on... on yes, motion to Properly moved by Trustee Carberry. Second. And seconded, I believe that was Alex Olenichik, uh, Trustee Olenichik seconding it. Uh, any discussion on this item? Yes, uh, Trustee Strait. Well, my question would be um, two questions, actually. One is, um, I believe that our code, and, and the attorney would, would please address this issue, is that our code allows for the appointment of three uh, commissioners in, in one year. So we're beyond that at this point. Right. Uh, and I'll explain that, Trustee Strait, uh, after we move through. We're, that'll be the next thing. Couldn't we? Can she explain it before you vote on it? I'd like to know how we can vote on it if we only allow three. Well, the, the item we're voting is the appointment in District 6, and that's not really one of the okay, then concerns. That's, all right. So. All right that's, yeah. That's, okay. That'd be fine. my. If you want to take one at a time, I, yeah. I agree. There is. There are three spots right now. Um, but if you want to take one at a time and address it that way. Correct, because okay. that's the way all these appointments are done, as you know. So uh, we're, we're, uh, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on this item? Okay, please take the roll. Trustee Strait? Yes. Trustee Ilanichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Carberry? Yes. Trustee Vorder? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. She will add a lot to that uh, commission. Thank you for the recommendation. Thank you, Madam President. She'll do a um, great job. So Oakland has recently completed a corridor study of Harlem Avenue, and currently we're participating in a 95th Street corridor study, a Cicero Avenue course, corridor study, and a Ridgeland corridor study. Uh, the, recommend, the recommendations of these studies are complex and will impact Oakland for generations. It's important to take those re uh, recommendations to heart whenever possible. And to facilitate this, I'm proposing to this uh, board an advisory panel which will report and interact with our Planning and Development Commission. Uh, Mr. Paul Vale's credentials have been included in your packet, and I'd like a motion to approve uh, Mr. Vale as the chair of this new advisory panel. Um, his responsibilities would be to attend every planning and development meeting and act as a liaison between management, the board, and the commission to implement and advise on the recommendations of these corridor studies. So he's not replacing anyone. Um, but uh, trying to take some of the workload from you and in, in, in a more organized fashion. Um, so I, I'd accept also nominations for consideration for two others. I'd like three on this panel with Mr. Vale as the chair. Um, and if you get me any recommendations for that, we can vote on them as soon as the next meeting, assuming everything is is. Uh, done. Uh, the rationale for this panel is to appropriately implement the recommendations made by these studies in a way that will not dramatically affect the already extremely large workload that these commissioners uh, have. Um, you, you do a fantastic job, but uh, this would be someone who attends every meeting and and can guide you was this one of the recommendations wasn't it so i'd like a motion please to nominate mr paul vale to chair this advisory panel of the planning and development commission yes, so mo go ahead sir. okay properly moved by trustee vorderer and seconded Second. by trustee carberry any discussion now of this uh item 
I know the name. Um, mm-hmm. I did look through these credentials. I just wanted to confirm if he did graduate from Mount Carmel or not.